Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome back to some subscriber replays. Um, now don't adjust your sets just before we go any further. They're not working poorly. Yes, this week's videos are going to be in a 5-4 aspect ratio. Sorry about that. Having some monitor fun and games. And I decided, although um, I have got a new monitor that is on order. Big thank you to Wolf. Uh, for supporting me on Patreon and making that a thing that I can comfortably therefore do. Um, the monitor will be arriving in a couple of days, but one of the wonderful things about having a small child is that you kind of have to make the best of the opportunities you've got to do stuff. So although the monitor should be arriving tomorrow, if I were to wait for that monitor, I would most likely not get any videos out this week. That's just how things go. So I'm choosing instead to record the videos for this week on my backup monitor, which is this. So apologies about that. It's going to be temporary. It will be fixed soon. Deal with it. Okay, we good? Cool. Moving on. First game from this particular showing. We are joining Pansy again, and he is in the Soviet Tier 8 light tank. Sorry, Soviet Tier 8 premium light tank. The LT-432. I don't think I've shown this video, or sorry, this tank on my channel before. It's a relatively recent addition to the game. When I say relatively recent, I mean it's a good few years now, obviously. But a relatively recent addition, bearing in mind I took a break from the game for a while. Um, and so I don't think I've shown showcased this thing before. Um, also, just to quickly note, no, Pansy is not just spamming gold at everything. This tank fires APCR as its standard ammunition, and its armor piercing is actually the um, special ammunition with higher penetration. Anyway, the thing with the LT-432 is it's very, very flat. And I'm always rather curious on this thing, and I know I'm not the only one. With it being so flat, how does it get seven? I think it's seven degrees of gun depression. That doesn't make any sense to me. Because usually one of the big things about gun depression is it's limited um, by the gun breach hitting the roof of the turret. And so you get some tanks like the German Tier 10 light tank, the... can't remember what it's called. The German Tier 10 light tank, where you can actually see the breach of the gun come up above the turret. But this thing, you don't get that. It just seems to get a really improbable gun depression. The gun depression only seems to make sense if this gun has no breach. Which is nonsense, because it's a gun, and I'm pretty sure the turret, uh, that, the, that it's not a recoilless gun, so the gun breach should go inside the turret, and anyway, whatever. It is what it is. Um, we're here on... Oh, what's the name of this map? Fisherman's Bay? Yes, Fisherman's Bay. And this is an all tier 8 match. And I've mentioned in a previous subscriber replay that the nice... Well, the nice thing, I suppose, about all same tier matches is they can be a really good opportunity to get a very tasty result for yourself. Because you've kind of got that sweet spot between the relative to your tank and tier, of course, quite a lot of damage and assistance damage and whatnot to go around whilst at the same time the tanks you're facing not being so well armoured and so overgunned compared to you that you're going to struggle to actually get it. Um, having said that, I must confess personally, I do also find all same tier matchmaking, certainly if you get it quite a lot, to be rather dull. I found that when playing the IS-6 relatively recently it gets preferential matchmaking and that the matchmaker therefore seems to put it in all tier 8 matches quite a lot. Anyway, on with the actual game in question. Um, Pansy's been just spotting some people from a bush and taking shots where he can and that's allowed him to rack up 700 damage and about 500 assistance damage which is fine but nothing too special. Now you can see the result on this game is actually getting quite... Uh, well, friendly team are winning by a, not not a landslide win, but it's a win by a respectable margin. And there goes the enemy LT-432. And in situations like this, there's a little bit of pressure on you, I suppose, to not completely suck out and have a terrible game. 
and there's 430 assistance on the artillery. Pansy didn't fire, so he wasn't spotted. Oh, hello, Mr. Carnarvon. Action X, how are you today? People just shooting you, and in this sort of situation, if your team have shots, I mean, why bother risking firing the gun and revealing your position? Now, I'm willing to bet, I haven't actually looked, the LT-432 probably has pretty good camo, and Pansy's using a camo on the tank. Like, he's probably got good camo. It's probably actually going to take the bad guys a little bit of effort to spot him. On the other hand, Carnarvon has, I think, 400 meter base view range. If that guy's using optics, suddenly that's up to 410. If that guy's a bit weird and using binos, suddenly that's up to a lot more. So, I can understand Pansy um, being a little cautious there, and the friendly team was certainly working the guy over, and there's a Ferdinand on the roof. Na, 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 na. Pansy takes the shot. At Ferdinand was much closer, but there's bushes in the way and all this good stuff, so um, clearly Pansy's betting on him not getting spotted. I mean, if Pansy does get spotted here, it's not the end of the world, obviously. The friendly team control at least part of that mid ridge um, so I wouldn't expect Pansy to get absolutely lit up if he did pull the trigger and get spotted here but nonetheless he hasn't so far up to 3k assistance now by the way from spotting these guys going from the for the lower front plate on the Carnarvon misses because Soviet guns and accuracy don't usually go together but the second shot manages to find its mark and that's Pansy's first kill this is turning into a little bit of a stomp. Uh, scoreline is 9-4. I mean, it's not a complete 15-0 whitewash or anything, but it definitely looks like it's going to be a pretty convincing result. So the challenge now kind of becomes, well, let's have a good game then, shall we? Um, and trying to do as much as you can. We know the TS-5 is back here, which probably accounts for why the enemy team were doing so poorly. That's a terrible position for a TS-5. TS-5's an assault gun, why would you camp in that thing? Probably because you don't really know what you're doing. Scorpion gets a shot in, which shaves off a lot of Pansy's health. The guy rolls high for 521. The Scorpion, of course, gets 490 average alpha damage, but there we go. The Pansy's now up to 1500 of his own damage, plus over 3.7k assistance. And there's, oh, there's the T-92. Like, there's only five of these guys left now. He can go and duel with the T-92, and the LT-432 actually gets some armour, and can ram people, which is quite funny. I haven't played this tank myself, but uh, having looked at the stats and certainly having seen the game like this, it, uh, it does look like it could be a lot of fun. Shot there into the Udes, the Tier 8 Swedish medium tank. Pew, pew, more shots, lots and lots of lovely shots. Um, 85mm gun on this thing, I believe. So, you know, it's... A tier 8 and 85mm gun's never going to have massive alpha damage, it's probably about 180. Yeah, 180 alpha is pretty much par for the course for a tier 8 light tank. Shot there into the butt of the TS-5, looks like he might have tracked the guy in the process, trying to keep the guy locked down, yeah, and there's more tasty tasty assistance damage. Unfortunately, the Carnarvon there blocks the tracking shot, wonder if he's being greedy or not, but either way, that's the match! Nice quick one for you there. So let's go and have a look at the post-game stats. So that was enough for Ace Tanker, Spotter, Fire for Effect, Bruiser, uh, Patrol Duty, I believe that is. Is that Patrol Duty? It's not Scout. Yes, it's Patrol Duty and a Confederate medal there for Pansy's game. Quite a nice result there. 2,952 damage done in the end, despite the fact there were a number of occasions on which Pansy just decided not to pull the trigger. Two kills, 1,463 base experience. Because, well, on top of that damage, you also had 5,109 assistance damage. Ten enemy vehicles damaged, that's two-thirds of the enemy team, hence the Confederate medal, and two destroyed. Most of that damage hit that Pansy did was from pretty close range, only received one hit, which, although the LT-432 has a little bit of armour, I mean, Scorpion G went through him. No big surprises there. And with a premium account, that was 130,690 credits quite a lot. Nice thing about assistance damage is you can start racking up experience and credits without pulling the trigger, which means you don't have the associated shell cost. So you can actually end up with some pretty profitable games in your light tanks, especially if they're premium light tanks. I would also like to point out, if we have a look at both teams, Pansy obviously had a good game. 
the caliber of player on Pansy's team though was just overall better than on the enemy team and in particular and I mentioned this at the time I'm sorry the TS5 camping at the back no no um just just no TS5 is a slow heavily armored tank it kind of plays like a turretless heavy tank I showcased a game in that not that long ago if you're camping at the back in your TS5 you're probably doing something wrong anyway let's go and have a look at the second match Match number two then, and we are here down at tier six, and we are joining Dampney from the always beautifully named Kebab Clan. We haven't seen a match from Dampney in a while, so I'm quite happy to showcase this, and he's in the VK 3001P. Now, I haven't shown the 3001P in a while, um, like a long while, many years, and so I thought it was nice to just show the tank again. But, health and safety warning, this game is from mid-2019. Since this game was played, the tank has been changed. Of course, all the low to mid-tier tanks have received a hit point readjustment. It, it's, a, it's a buff. Um, and in the case of the VK, it's now a heavy tank instead of a medium tank. So, don't expect the VK to play exactly like this if you were to pick it up and try it out. Um, but... Uh, it should still be an entertaining game all the same. So Dampney is here in a tier 7 maximum match. And he's on... I am doing rubbish with map names at the moment. It is Corellia. I was thinking and then thought, no, you'll say Corellia and you'll be wrong. And people will think you're an idiot. And I should have just risked people thinking I'm an idiot. I do it often enough anyway. So Dampney is over on the southern flank here. And this is, of course, an assault game. Dampney's team are the one who are attacking and he is pushing up fairly aggressively here. Um, now, oh, hello Sherman, kill number one. You can certainly do well pushing up aggressively, and ooh, that was a little bit lucky. ARL V39 for 300 alpha, he's definitely using the 105mm gun that gets lower penetration than the quote-unquote top gun, but you get higher alpha damage, among other things. Um, but Dampney was a little bit lucky to bounce that shot, if we're going to be honest. Now, the thing with this position is, if you're not careful, oh, you can do something like this and find all the bad guys and suddenly you're in a whole world of hurt. Dampney is doing the right thing here, he's just pushing it and I'd have actually been really tempted to ram the T-34, I think. Although, to be fair, maybe that would have left him a little bit exposed to enemy guns. Um, but, pushing down into this gully means that tank destroyers, who were where that T-67 was, no longer have shots on you. And so Dampney's just able to deal with that T-67 as well, who is called Steaming Cow Pie. I just want to highlight that, because that name's awesome. Scoreline is 5-2. This, to some degree, is kind of how you want to play this flank in uh, on Assault, if you can. Often, this flank gets bogged down, and if you're the attacking team, that's a real nuisance. However, I would like to point out, Dampney played this very aggressively. He didn't know necessarily who was back there, but he did know there was a tank destroyer, and whilst the ARL V39 isn't a great tank, it's still perfectly capable of putting big fat holes in your face. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend playing it exactly as Dampney did here, and that's perhaps a little too aggressive um, as a general rule of thumb, but you, you, there's a certain degree to which you, you need to play your assault games if you're on the attacking team aggressively. Oh, hello, Mr. Tiger P. Dampney manages to sneak a shot in there. Now, this tank uses the short 88mm gun. I'd just also like to highlight, by the way, that it looks like Dampney's got... Is that... Yeah, that's two marks of excellence on his VK, so he's clearly quite likes the tank. Anyway, this tank uses the short L56 88mm gun, the one that everybody seems to hate, except for people like me. 220 alpha damage, 145 penetration with regular ammunition, I believe. Yep, and with APCR, that penetration goes up to 194. Um, it gets used quite a bit on a lot of mid-tier, especially German tanks, though there's the odd uh, Japanese and Czechoslovakian machine packing the gun as well. Oh, hello, that's a bishop. An ARL, Dampney's spotted, maybe don't poke out there again, or that ARL will slap you in the face, and we already know he's got a big gun. 300 damage, that would hurt. Um, but Dampney's getting a nice amount of uh, spotting here. Oh, do you want to put that setter out of his misery? Oh, 190, low damage, right, I mean... Unlikely to actually kill the guy, of course, but uh, poor setter. Misses. Oh, ARL. Are there two ARLs in this game? There are. 
So that ARL is using one of the 90mm guns with 240 Alpha. Well, he was before he died. Um, two ARLs on the enemy team. Poor blighters. Oh, well. We know there's another one. Oh, there's the other one. He's got 300 Alpha. Yeah, like that. Um, now, bad things about this gun. Generally speaking, it's a little bit on the potato thrower side. Um, the best version of this gun really is the one you find on the... Oh, that was a bit risky on the tier 6 German tank destroyer, the Jagdpanzer IV. Um, of course that thing doesn't have a turret, but I like the gun on that tank. It can be a bit more frustrating on some of the turreted machines because unfortunately... Hello Mr. Setter. Oh, artillery takes the guy out. Like I say, it's a little bit derpy. Scoreline's 10-3 by the way, and the friendly team have still got five minutes left of this match. So, this is another one of those games, even more so than the last one, that's a bit ruffly. Um, shot on the lower front plate of that SU, didn't quite work out. Waiting for the guy to fire before taking a shot. That SU has a pretty speedy reload, but he's clearly not looking at dampening. 175 is a terrible damage roll. This gun hits for 220 on average. Can you pick up the kill? Yes, there we go. That's Dampney's fifth kill, and there are only two of them left at this point. Oh, is Dampney going to be able to get stuck in and pick up any other results? S-51 artillery piece and Panzer 4H medium tank. Come on, come on. Get over there and kill him. Kill him. Kill, kill, kill. Oh, either of those guys could probably derp Dampney in the face, of course, but... Uh, come on, Panzer 4H. Oh, I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, alas, not. But... Nice quick game there, and a win in an assault match on Corellia. Always nice to see. And in a tank that, well, it's not exactly overpowered, is it? Anyway, for the last time in this video, let's have a look at those post-game stats. So, Dampney himself titled this uh, replay mid-tier aggression, and, well, he's not wrong. Ace tanker, spotter, steel, uh, not steel wall, shellproof, sorry. Fighter, fire for effect, and a lover Schlyos medal that you pick up for destroying two enemy tanks or TDs with a medium tank in one battle and they have to be at least one tier higher than you. So basically, murdering higher tier things. So that would be the Tiger P and who else? The SU-12244 would be what got him that medal. 1,357 damage done. Five kills. 1,214 base experience, which is pretty nice. Now these days, after the HP buff, um, you you tend to find that you need to do more damage than that to pick up an ace, but, uh, you know, back when this game was a th was was played, that was fine. And to be fair, Dampney supplemented those 5 kills and, let's call it 1400 damage, with over 2100 assistance. He played that aggressively, which led to a nice, quick assault game. That's how you want your assault games to go if you're on the attacking team. Get in there, mess them up get it over with because you don't have the time to hang around for those not aware assault games have a 10 minute timer instead of a 15 minute timer to kind of try and encourage the attacking team to get off their backside and go and do something even with a standard account that was worth what 23 and a half thousand credits profit which is none too shabby for a very good game i feel i should point out though there we go a couple of replays for you hope the 5 to 4 aspect ratio wasn't too painful to work with um, as ever, I will say there should be very do various doobly doos popping up on the screen for you to click on if you want another video or a playlist or anything along those lines. If you want to send your own replays to me, then jump on the Discord channel and put your replays uploaded to whatreplays.com, put the URLs in the appropriate place, and I shall take a look. Um, if you wish to support me on Patreon, there is a link in the description. Uh, the Like I say, the next thing on the purchase list is a new monitor, which is already in the works. And then, some point in the new year, I'm going to be trying to look at a better microphone. Because let's be honest, this one's a bit tinny. Um, and like a decent microphone would be nice. So that would be the next thing on the to-buy list. And, as ever, I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.